join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the series Anthropology Around You. In this series, we take up certain issues in current affairs and try to make sense of those issues anthropologically. The second topic which we are going to discuss in the series is sologamy. So if you can recall last year, there was a sologamy which was solemnized in India in the state of Gujarat. Specifically, a girl in Vadodara married herself with all the pomp and show, which is usually accompanied with a traditional Indian wedding. Now, why is this news important anthropologically? If you have studied anthropology and the connotations with respect to marriage, you have an idea that there's no universal definition of marriage that fits in the whole framework. There have been multiple points of view and multiple definitions over a period of time. And not one definition caters to every idea of marriage which is found across the world. In the past, we have had questions whereby UPSC had tried to ask us, what is the situation of live-in relationships in India? So this question probably becomes relevant from that perspective that where do you situate sologamy as an institution in marriage? So let's try to understand this narrative in this episode. What is sologamy first? So in sologamy, it's nothing but a person is marrying oneself. And if I look at the anthropological perspectives of marriage, we'll begin with the most accepted definition which is given in Notes and Quarries in 1951, which cited that marriage is a union between a man and a woman, and the purpose of marriage is to have a legitimate progeny. By far, this is considered to be the most universal definition of marriage. However, it has a lot of drawbacks. If we look at other perspectives, for example, Malnowski talks about marriage being a social contract. If we talk about Murdoch, another perspective, he says that marriage is a union between a male and a female. Added with that, it gives rise to the institution of a nuclear family and there is economic cooperation and cohabitation. These are perspectives on marriage in anthropology, right? So if you look at these definitions, you'll see that none of them is going to accommodate sologamy, so to speak. However, before I move to sologamy, if you look at these definitions, you'll understand that there is a certain issue with these definitions. What is the issue? It is not accounting for same-sex marriages, which are found in a tribe called Azande of Sudan. It is not accounting for polygamy. It is not accounting for polyandry either. And if you can quote the form of marriage which was form, found in the Nairs, where the child after his or her birth goes into the matrilineal line of inheritance without having a father figure. So if we look at these exceptions, you will find that they do not fit in any definition of marriage. However, on the basis of fieldwork traditions which were carried out by different anthropologists over a period of time, it was concluded that marriage, so to speak, is a near universal phenomena. But the way and the manner in which it is executed in different societies can be significantly different. Now, after having an overview of what marriage is anthropologically and what issues 
do these definitions already have let us try to gain in perspective with respect to sologamy now come back to the definition sologamy is an instance where a person is marrying oneself so therefore it is not fulfilling the basic agenda of the communion of a man and a woman secondly it does not give us a scope of having a biological progeny because having a legitimate biological progeny is considered to be the central theme of marriage irrespective of the definition we consider and if you look at these definitions you will see that there's always a focus on legitimacy of the child and there's no scope for adoption whatsoever so therefore adoption has also been left out of the paradigm of anthropological perspectives on marriage and if i look at sologamy perspectively when you are marrying yourself the probability of you having a legitimate biological child with a fatherly figure is nil so there kicks in artificial insemination techniques and ivf where still there has to be a sperm donor or there can be an adoption but we have already discussed that adoption as a paradigm is not included in any of the older perspectives on marriage as well so to conclude sologamy specifically will not find a rightful or an acceptable position in societies after all not just india it's true with respect to the worldly perspective also the reason being it does not fulfill the basic logic of marriage this was one point on which all anthropologists agreed universally that the reason behind marriage is to have a line of inheritance or a progeny so it violates the basic rule to have a progeny or a line of inheritance secondly it does not fit in any anthropological definition or milieu which has been centered around the idea of marriage thirdly adoption as a narrative has already been excluded by the anthropological view or perspective so therefore if we even try to compare sologamy with the modern narrative of marriage which is more centered around the idea of companionship and emotional stability sologamy doesn't fulfill that purpose as well so therefore a person who wants to be with himself or herself can choose to be with them forever but there's no need for an institution to solemnize that relation you have with oneself so therefore in near future we will not find any credibility for sologamy as an institution across the societies no matter what societies we are discussing in and if you look at the case studies sologamy as an incidence it is not the first which has happened in india it has already happened twice once in brazil once in america and in one of the cases the woman also ended her marriage with herself and then married a partner so therefore there is not a successful trend that can be looked for and it does not satisfy the underlying logic or basis on which the foundation of marriage is inherently built so therefore it will not stand the test of time from the societal paradigms i hope you have gained a perspective on sologamy from this discussion thank you